Welcome back. Now we answer questions we've received from you, our viewers. If you have a question, visit our website, quranspeaks.com. Dr. Shabir, the question is, if the Quran allows a Muslim man to marry four wives, why did the Prophet Muhammad have more than four wives? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Surah 4, verse number 3 is commonly interpreted uh, among Muslims to mean that a, a man could have up to four wives, but not more than four. Hmm. And uh, while it is clear that it uh, does allow a man to have up to four wives under certain conditions, I mean, it puts the condition, if you fear that you will not do justice to the orphans. Mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, that can be discussed a little bit more. But uh, given the conditions and circumstances in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, at the time when this verse was revealed, uh, when many Muslims had been killed in battle and there were many widows and orphans uh, to be taken care of, uh, the Quran was encouraging the men at the time to take on additional wives, to take on more responsibility, mainly to care for the widows and the orphans who were there in the Muslim society at a time when a welfare system had not been set up to care for uh, the people who were in, in such situations of need. And so it became an individual responsibility for those who will choose to take on the additional responsibility. So it says, uh, if uh, you fear that you will not do justice to the orphans, then marry the women who are suitable for you in twos and threes and fours. Um, uh, so it, uh, but it, it didn't mean, in my humble uh, estimation, like putting all of the facts together, uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, ruling out the possibility of having more than four wives. Mm. Uh, no, I'm not saying that this means that Muslim men should now say, hey, Sheikh Shabir said, uh, that we can go have five wives now, hmm. now because I would say that uh, really the, the, the optimal uh, choice is to have one wife and um, having you know, additional wives is an exception uh, that catered more for that situation of need at the time. And maybe in some circumstances in various parts of the world, uh, it still retains some advantages which it used to have in the past for a man to have additional wives. Uh, mainly, I would argue that uh, in patriarchal societies and in the past, in tribal societies, more to the point, um, it, it was necessary for the tribes to enlarge and to enlarge quickly uh, by, you know, population numbers. And, and the way a tribe grew is by having a patriarch with many children, mm -hmm. uh, whereas a woman is limited in the number of children she can bear in, in her lifetime, uh, a man has uh, a, a greater possibility of fathering many children through many wives. Uh, so that all of these children are related to each other and a tribe is, is born. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, in the Prophet's case, he didn't actually have a lot of children, right? Uh, yes, he didn't have, uh, not, not personally, but I'm talking about having the uh, permission to have multiple wives in general, mm -hmm, how mm -hmm. it helped past mm -hmm. societies. So it remained like that. Now, uh, the Prophet's marriages in particular were for largely political and social reasons, and we can get into that in more detail. Uh, if you're interested. Sure, let's do it. Uh, but, but for the moment, I want to deal with the core uh, question here, which is, um, uh, you know, why did he have more than four if the Quran limited uh, believers to having only, only four? And I, wanted, I want to uh, speak of how uh, Muslim commentators have uh, dealt with this as an objection already. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, taking uh, Surah 4, verse number 3, uh, to mean uh, that this is a limitation, you can have four and only four, they had to explain how did the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, have more than four. Now, you can tell from what I've already exp uh, explained from my humble position, I, I don't need to explain that part for myself because mm -hmm. uh, there, there was no limitation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so if the Prophet, peace be upon him, had more than four, which he did, uh, then there was no contradiction between this and, and that. Now, for those who, who might see that there is a contradiction, they have to explain. So, and this is what they have tried to explain. They said that in the 33rd chapter of the Quran, in the 50th uh, verse, uh, there is uh, a, a permission given to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, to marry more than four. He specifically, but no one else. Because the, the verse says that, uh, you know, God knows what he has imposed on the believers in terms of, uh, you know, the, their wives and their right-hand possessions. Um, so, so they're saying that whereas Surah 4 verse number 3 uh, limits the number of wives uh, for believers in general to be uh, a maximum of four, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had special permission in the 33rd chapter uh, to have more than four wives. Mm -hmm. Now, what is my um, answer to that? If I say that, you know, he did not have such a 
special permission. This was a permission open to all. Well, I would say that the Surah 33 verse is not uh, giving a renewed permission or, or, or a special permission to have more than four wives. Uh, the, uh, that chapter was giving a special dispensation to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, that he could marry without giving a dower. Hmm. Uh, and while I say that this was special to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it's not limited to him in that if anyone else were in his uh, situation not having any wealth uh, from which one could easily give a dower to a, a potential bride, then that person would be exempt as well. And an ex example of a person being exempt like this is the man uh, who was there in the mosque with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as related in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. It is said that a woman came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and offered to marry him. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not reply. If, if he had answered yes, that would have been the offer and acceptance right there. In the presence of witnesses, they would have been considered married. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not uh, reply to the offer. Uh, and then a man sitting there said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, messenger of God, if you don't have any need for her, then marry her to me. Hmm. Uh, so the Prophet asked him, do you have anything to give her as a dower? And he said, uh, I only have this clothes on my body. So the Prophet said, if you give her the clothes, you know, what are you going to wear? <laughs> so go out and find something that you can give her, even a ring uh, of iron, perhaps. So he went away and he came back and he said, I couldn't find anything. So the Prophet asked him, okay, do you know anything of the Quran? He said, yes. He said, okay, I marry her to you for what you know of the Quran. Uh, interpreters say, well, it is expected that he would teach her something of the Quran and that would be of value to her. So he has to give her something of value. But of course, it wasn't anything material. So he had nothing material to give and he's exempt because any obligation in the religion of Islam, whether it's the obligation to make Hajj or to give Zakat, is only dependent on one's ability, in this case, financial ability. Mm -hmm. So to give a dower to the wife depends on one's financial ability. If one doesn't have the financial ability and the, and the potential bride agrees, then she can be married without receiving a financial uh, dower. She might receive something else, a token or something like this, um, or nothing at all if that's what she chooses. Uh, uh, in, in one case, a person migrates uh, to the land of Islam uh, as, as a way of satisfying the requirement of his wife to get married to her, all right, the potential bride. So now the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not have uh, material possessions. He gave everything he had in charity. So he didn't have anything to give to a potential bride. So his, the exemption he was given in that uh, verse already mentioned is for him to um, be able to marry uh, without the need to give a dower. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't an exemption from some perceived general rule that you can have only a maximum of, of four wives. Now again, I'm not saying that uh, whether the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or believers in general, that we should have more than four wives. We, we, we know that the Prophet, peace be upon him, encountered problems from, from the very fact that he had multiple wives. And, um, you know, some of these problems are easily conceivable um, to be had by all and sundry, you know, sometimes... Uh, there, are, uh, there is bickering among the wives, uh, there is displeasure, and, and in any case, from the get-go, a, a, a man's time is naturally going to be divided, and all of his efforts and, and resources and so on are going to be divided among the wives. So no mm -hmm. one wife is going to have that kind of exclusive uh, right to her husband uh, as she would have had in a monogamous uh, relationship. So the, the wives in a, in a polygamous relationship, there's no doubt about it, generally is disadvantaged vis-a-vis uh, -vis the wife who is in a monogamous uh, relationship, all things being equal, of course. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't compare our best with the worst of other uh, societies, uh, in a, but we should see, you know, what's all things being equal, what is better? Is better for a woman to be married to, um, she, solely to be married to a man rather than to be a co-wife sharing her husband with, uh, with other wives. So in, in the case of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I've already indicated uh, that uh, he used marriages for political and social purposes, and, and you were interested in that. Mm -hmm. So if you're still interested, sure, go I ahead. will elaborate a little bit. So, uh, you know, as a Muslim, naturally, I want to defend the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, uh, and, and, you know, present him as uh, a good example for others and so on. But it's interesting that uh, some non-Muslim reviewers of the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, have pointed out 
that his marriages were largely for political and social purposes. Uh, these uh, writers include uh, John Esposito in his book, Islam, The Straight Path, and Karen Armstrong, his, uh, her biography of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, entitled Muhammad. Now, why did they reach this conclusion? Now, if we look at the uh, marriages of the Prophet, peace be upon him, we'll see that uh, um, uh, the biographer, uh, biographical information about him shows that uh, he uh, was married for the first time when he was 25 years old. Uh, his wife at the time was said to be 40. The age might have been exaggerated, but nonetheless, this is how in the, it is in the biographical records. And uh, all the children he had was with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, he lived with her until she passed away. At that time, he was uh, about 50 years old. Uh, so for 25 years, he had only one wife. And uh, when she passed away, the Prophet, peace be upon him, had uh, daughters, young daughters like Fatima. And uh, she, he needed somebody to care for his daughters. So then he started to um, think about getting married again. And uh, he got married uh, to Sauda, um, who showed uh, potential for caring for uh, his uh, daughters. And he also got married to Aisha, who was young. Um, and her age is uh, another subject of discussion. Mm -hmm. But uh, nonetheless, uh, her young age uh, meant that she uh, was able to transmit to us and to Muslims in general uh, much information about the domestic life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So whereas he was visible to all and sundry uh, out of doors, uh, what about his home life? How did the Prophet, peace be upon him, live at home? And how can we copy his good example uh, as a homeowner and uh, a family man? Uh, much of that information came to us through Aisha radiallahu anha and by virtue of her young age, because she was able to learn much and lived a long time to transmit that information uh, to Muslims eventually so that that information could be recorded in our classical texts. Uh, 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 Aisha was uh, the, the daughter of a close companion of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr had sacrificed much and bore much privation, uh, especially in the early days when people were being persecuted for the mere fact of being Muslim. Nowadays, we think it's not easy being Muslim, but it, and at that time, you know, being Muslim was even uh, more um, a, 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 a of peril to the person mm -hmm. because you could be killed, could be tortured, and so on. So Abu Bakr uh, needed to be rewarded in some way, and what better way to reward him than to get married to his daughter so that his daughter becomes one of the, what is referred to in our um, uh, traditions as Ummul Mu'mineen, the, the mothers of the believers, Ummahatul Mu'mineen. So she was now um, Ummul Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers. So we refer to her with that title of respect. She had been given this status. And by her being given that status, that would obviously be some consolation to her father who had sacrificed so much for the faith. Mm -hmm. Now, the Prophet, peace be upon him, married uh, another daughter of another companion that was Omar, who uh, eventually became the second caliph after Abu Bakr was the first caliph. And by marrying Hafsa, the daughter of Omar, the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was also showing his appreciation for Omar, who had sacrificed so much for the faith. And uh, uh, Hafsa, by this time, was also a widow. Uh, so what was to be done with the uh, widows at that time? The Quran, we've already indicated, encouraged the men to take on additional wives in order to care for the widows in that society and any orphan children along with them. So Hafsa was already a widow, and uh, men at the time desired to marry virgins. Uh, virginity was prized. Uh, so it uh, took an extra step for someone to decide to marry a widow. The Prophet, peace be upon him, married Hafsa, one would say as an act of compassion. And also it fulfilled the dual role of uh, being a political move to uh, further solidify his relationship with one of his close companions who was sacrificing a lot and defending the faith, uh, mm -hmm. Omar, mm -hmm. who became then the second uh, caliph. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, got uh, um, married to uh, Juwaria, uh, who was the daughter of the Banu Mustalik chief. And the Banu Mustalik people had come to um, fight with the Muslims. And when they were defeated in battle, their people were taken as captives. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, by marrying Juwaria, now uh, made a, a relationship with the people of Juaria, mm -hmm. and as a result, uh, the Muslims who had taken the Juaria's people as captives all decided to release the captives because they said we, it's not right for us to hold the relatives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as, as captives. 
So later on, uh, Aisha, uh, the mother of the believers, could remark that uh, she's never seen a woman bringing more good to her people than Jibaria did on the day when she got married to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, so we can see that her, this, this, her marriage to the Prophet, peace be upon him, was with a political motive in, in mind and, and a, social, a social one. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, similarly married uh, Sophia, your namesake, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, who was the daughter of a Jewish uh, a chief. And uh, when uh, she got married to the Prophet, peace be upon him, that established a closer relationship between the Muslims and the Jews at the time. Uh, so that Sophia could be uh, said to be like a sister of Aaron, um, you know, or um, family uh, of Aaron and, and, and Moses. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, um, uh, similarly married uh, other uh, wives for political and uh, social reasons. Umm Habiba uh, was one of his uh, early followers uh, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was in Mecca, his birthplace. But the Prophet and other Muslims were driven out from, from his birthplace. Some had migrated to Abyssinia. The Prophet, peace be upon him, migrated to Medina. And uh, Umm Habiba was one of those who had migrated to Abyssinia. But in the meantime, in Abyssinia, her husband died. And uh, Umm Habiba was left there as a woman far away from her home, disowned by her family. And uh, she was in a strange land. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, showed compassion by getting uh, married to her by proxy and she moved to live with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Medina. Mm -hmm. that, that was an astute political move because uh, Habiba actually was the daughter of Abu Sufyan, who was one of the chief opponents of the Prophet Muhammad, mm -hmm. peace be upon him, and a leader of the Meccan people. Mm -hmm. So later on, uh, uh, Abu Sufyan softened his uh, stance against the Prophet and the Muslims as a result of this marriage. And uh, that paved the way for the Prophet, peace be upon him, to re-enter Mecca uh, victorious, taking over the city uh, so that Islam could be established there. And, uh, and normally that would only be, uh, be, be, be done with a lot of bloodshed, but the marriage of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to Umm Habiba averted all of that. So uh, if we trace the marriages one by one and we continue, you will see that uh, all of them have some kind of political or social implication. And that's not to deny that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a human being. Muslims uh, admit that the Prophet was a human being like the, the rest of us, uh, having a human desires and needs and so on. Um, but at the same time, he used his, um, you know, his humanity uh, for the sake of good. And um, his marriages uh, you know, demonstrate that. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you for that, Dr. You're welcome. Support us today and help us share the message of Islam with people across the globe. Thank you, and may God bless you and your loved ones with the very best always. <laughs>